Aunque en el jefe 45 algo. And I want to start by saying that we are all sinners. Number one, we are all sinners. Naturally, we are sinful by nature. Actually, we do not need to commit sin for us to be sinners. We are sinful by nature. I always ask, how many of us stole sugar when they were young? How many of us stole sugar when they were young? Let me see your hands. Get up. Okay, let me pass. How many of us did not steal sugar when they were young? Jamie, somebody that did not steal sugar when they were young? Chair, chair, you see you are professional thieves. I'm going to make a campus. Now you are going to get a sugar. And by the way, when you are asked by your mama or your daddy, who made us cry? What do you say? Yes, mama, you made us cry. Is that how you respond? Who taught you to say lies? It is the nature. We are sinful by nature. And all through and through again, I've never seen rules and regulations that teaches us to do the wrong. All the school rules, all the rules and regulations, all the constitutions, it always teaches us to do what is right. But we always find ourselves, we don't start doing what is wrong. We always find ourselves doing what is wrong. Is that true? Yes, we find ourselves because we are sinful by nature. And David says in Psalms 51 verse 5, that when I, before I was in my mother's school, uh, Psalms 51 verse 5, How is it possible for us to do this? It's because we are sinful by nature. Surely I was sinful at birth. Sinful that by, uh, from the time my mother conceived me. So it is the nature. And Romans 3 to the 3 says, For all have sin and fallen short of the glory of God. There's another one in, in Romans chapter 7, verses 14. Romans. Chapter 7. If you find that, please study the book of Romans. Verses 15. Verses 15. Romans 7 15. I do not understand. This is Paul uh, talking and looking at his life. He says, I do not understand what I do or what I want to do. I do not do. Yeah? See that? He doesn't want, there's something that he doesn't want to do. He finds himself doing. I'll say it, sometimes we don't stumble doing sin, we find ourselves doing it. But what I hate, verses 15, but, but what I hate, I do. 16. And if I do what I do not want to do, I agree that the Lord is good. 17. And it is, and it is, and it is no longer I myself who do it, but sin living in me. The nature. See, you, you struggle doing what is right, but what you need to find yourself doing it again and again. See the why, my dish to the why. When somebody is in LT4, LT4, I may have to do a couple of months, or may have a job. Sometimes you have to tell yourself, start to copy, I'm going to do it on the top, exactly. Yeah. And you want to bring your kid. You put the mother to keep your mother's dinner to get in a floor. And you are there, you stop, you do. At the end of the day, it is easy for you to compromise at all. But you, it is still living in you. And number two, we will not blame Adam and Eve because after we won't get away from our garden. You would have what Eve and Adam did. There is a high possibility that you will do as Adam would do. I, 
I believe so. Today, if we set up a setup and say there is a box here, no one should touch it. Put away the cup and I'm going to be able to see Please don't touch it until when I come back. A very nice box. You say we saw the paper was appealing to the eye. A nice box. Left in your room and you are told don't touch it until when I come back. One day, two days, three days, two. I believe one day you know to when well, you are tempted to say, can I even need to go that? Some of us do not even take hours. The same way, if you would have been put in the garden of Eden, there is high chances that you would do what Adam and Eve did. So we are, we are the owners of this problem called sin. By nature, and by the virtue that we are children uh, and the lineage of Adam. We all came from Adam. Acts 7, chapter 6. We all came from Adam. And we are the lineage of Adam. So, very fast. How do we deal with sin in the next few minutes? And even before we look at how we, we did or how we overcome, When he went ahead and looked for man in verse 9 of Genesis, God goes and looks for man for himself. It is not man looking for God, it is God himself looking for man. And he says, Where are you, man? Where are you? Where are you? And I believe most of us, when we have seen, there is always the voice of God telling you, What have you done? Where? What? What is this that you've done? The voice of God always speaks to us. Even before, when, even before you see, what are you up to? What are you almost doing? The voice of God always looks for us. And it's not because God did not know where I was. But He was looking, He was giving Adam a chance to say, I have seen. But Adam goes ahead and gives excuses and she is blamed. God is the one who looked for Adam and he looks for us even when we are in sin. He calls us. And furthermore, he gives Adam a promise in Genesis 3.15. In Genesis 3.15. As he was speaking to the serpent, as God was speaking to the serpent, God gives a promise. Uh, in 3.15 of Genesis. He's speaking, to, in this point, if you look at the context, he's speaking to the serpent, and he tells the serpent, I will put an enemy between you, the serpent, and the woman. That is the truth, the serpent and the woman. And between your offspring, between your offspring, you serpent, and us, he will crush your head. Now, he said, he said the serpent, that this offspring, will crush your head and you will strike his head. That is the promise of Christ Jesus in Genesis. And Christ Jesus comes to destroy the dominion by crushing the head of the devil. Although he will suffer a little while by being stricken by the heel, he will crush the dominion of Satan. That's the promise that Adam is given. And that is our promise as a church. It's most, that is our promise. That although sin is there, God gave us a promise, and the promise is in Christ Jesus. What you need in character about Jesus is that you will flow from the lineage of Adam. Christ is born without sin through the Holy Spirit. And He's the one who is able to die for our sin, because the penalty of sin, as we know, was death. And so Christ died for our sin. In Hebrews chapter 2, Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 2, verses 15, Christ was made man in every way. Uh, verses uh, 17. For this reason, 
he had, he had to be made like them, fully human in every way, in order that he might become a merciful and a faithful high priest in service to God, and that he might make an atonement for the sins of the people. Because he himself suffered when he was tempted, and is able to help those who are being tempted. Christ became our atonement. There's a lot of things about the cross. The power of the cross. Christ, my problem that I want you to know that Christ was sinless and he was able to die for our sin. Are we getting the point? Yes. Because he was without sin, Christ was the was the right atonement for our sin. Christ was the right sacrifice for our sin. And we can overcome sin. How do we overcome sin? Number one, we develop a personal relationship with Christ or with God. Develop a personal relationship with Christ. God has made call not to control us, but to have a relationship with Him. I just do it a little to the sake or so that we can just serve him and do or, uh, or walk in his way. I mean, people, easily we can have a personal relationship with him. As a father and a son and as a father and a daughter. And through that, you will always love for him. You will always want to walk with him. And every time you always want to listen to your father as he speaks. And he will always rebuke you of any sin that he tells you. First Timothy 3, 16 to 17, he says, The word of God uh, is God's bread, and it is useful for teaching, correcting. Uh, teaching, rebuking, correcting, and tra training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped. Second Timothy three sixteen. God's word is there to correct us, and it only comes when we have a personal relationship with Him. Number two, how do we overcome sin? Do not put yourself in a situation of sin. Do not put yourself in a situation of sin. Do not put yourself in a situation of sin. Like in Je like Joseph in Genesis 39 10. Genesis 39 10. Joseph was very aware of the temptation that he was going to see. Or the temptation was that was waiting uh, to to on him. Please, children of God, let us not put ourselves in a situation that we can easily compromise see. It is it is a nine nine pm on a car and a seven nine zakula sapa ko na. Please, let's not put ourselves in those situations. At the only relationship, give me a kind of indication. Mini? Cash. Kwana? Let's not put ourselves in situations of sin. Number three, be aware of Satan's voice. Be aware of Satan's voice. You see, the devil came in a craft way and spoke so nice. He will be like God. You will not know how to look at the level of potential to go to the same man. You see, John 10 and 6, he comes to steal, kill, and finally destroy. Please be aware through design. Please. 
ni time ya kukua na alas na kukua na risame. Number four, know your areas of weakness. Please identify your areas. So that when you are there, you know your area of weakness. The habitual sin. We close to about one. We close to about one. Six.